is to keep away those negative the evil spirits yeah the evil spirits are the negative in the cemetery and you know just so people are aware iron was always believed to be one of the top charms against evil spirits right so keeping away demons or witches or sorcerers and european folklore um, has always said you know witches can't pass over cold iron and or bury a knife um, under your doorstep to ensure that no witches will come. It has to be iron, of course. Um, you know, witches won't be able to enter the threshold of your house or iron. Um, they would put iron spikes in the corners of villages. So they would actually go to each corner of your village and, and drive iron spikes into the ground. And that would help to keep, you know, witches and demons and things out of your uh, <laughs> out of your village to be truthful my property is actually grounded with four large iron spikes (laughs) not because i'm trying to keep it (laughs) so i've got four neighbors away yeah pretty much (laughs) um (laughs) you know there's intention there right so you know you you do these things um now it's funny because, of course, um, Ed and I were, were joking because he said, well, you have no problem passing through the gate. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, but I'm not a gate. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, now, I've never... Um, the, the spikes on, on your property, is that something you did or was it already there on the property when you purchased it? Um, it's Well, we, we did it. We grounded the property as well. Um, we use it to ground the property. But oddly okay. enough, we do have a number of iron spikes in our property already from the seaway uh, because we live in an old blasting bunker that... Um, yes, because I know that your, your property is quite old. Yes, it, it was originally, the building was originally constructed in 1820. So we are going back to this time and whoever constructed the building, it is, it's a block construction so it's not stones it's actually block because you know they had concrete in 1820 and I know people always seem so surprised you know oh there was there's been concrete since Mesopotamia (laughs) right (laughs) Right? it's just people always seem to be so surprised but they would have been poured solid block concrete blocks right they weren't like today's blocks and and so this is what my house is essentially constructed out of because it wasn't a house but at that time um the seaway i guess when they were marking the property they drove iron pilings like spikes big ones Um, so think of like a railway spike but it's about two feet and they drove it into the ground into the stone because i have about four inches of soil on my property and then after that it's stone it's like I'm mm-hmm. on a big giant chunk of iron pyrite here. My property has, I've got pieces of iron pyrite on my property that probably weigh a ton at the wow. back of my property. Yeah, because when they were blasting the canal, there was a lot of um, a lot of iron pyrite and a lot of um, lodestone too here, and 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 granite and limestone and everything else um, and chert right? There's a lot of chert here too. So there was a lot of blasting going on. So I'm not sure if those rocks ended up on my property from the blasting, which is possible. I've got chunks of it here, like big chunks, just (laughs) kind of all over the place. Um, And so I'm not sure if that was it or because this is sort of bedrock here and uh, we're we're sitting literally on an old um, ancient prehistoric seabed here that it's just part of whatever was there originally but it's hard to say but if you start to dig in my property and dig down you will hit stones you'll start like you're digging you're like oh (laughs) but yeah so the iron so I know that the seaway when they and and of course this was pre-seaway right because this would have been the um the canal the Welland Canal Company with William Merritt and Job Northrup and and other people Um, And so when they started to come through here and create the canal, there was originally a 
a small, I guess a creek here or a, a small river, and they expanded that. And, of course, the early boats were just flat bottom barges. They weren't the boats that we're seeing come through today. So the canal was about 12 feet deep. They dredged it down to 12 feet. So it doesn't sound like a lot, but when you're trying to blast out old ancient seabed (laughs) from the prehistoric era, right? So so the property, so what they did was they sunk some iron spikes in, and I suspect that those iron spikes may have been used originally to tether rope for the workers when they were constructing the first walls of the first canal so that it was, um, it would, they may have used it to hold, because I literally, my property was right on the towpath. So my property, the little road that's there now called Weir Road was the towpath for the canal. So this is where the ox and the, and the horse would have pulled the, the barges through. And so the canal is right there. Now gone are the old wooden supports that would have held back the rocks and the earth originally. But I think that those spikes that were planted in those edges of the property were likely used as um, tie-offs, possibly for barges even, or they may have been used when they were constructing to hold the lumber in place. So if, like my property is quite long, but if you had ropes tethered to that, you could hold fairly long pieces of lumber um, to tie it off while you were trying to you know, to um, spike it into place because those pieces of lumber were all uh, cut into um, square, quite large, you know, probably, I mean, the trees they used were huge. So they were cut and then they had um, holes cut in them and big wooden pegs were driven through to hold them together, much like constructing a ship back in the day. So I think that oh, some okay. of that may be to tie off some of those large um, beams that they were working with. And so, you know, driving those big spikes in. So those spikes are still there today. Every once in a while, the seaway will come along and go along the edge of the property with their metal detector. And I I always laugh because I'm thinking, would you think that we pulled those out somehow? They're embedded (laughs) in the rock. (laughs) And now they're buried about two feet down under a berm because they created essentially a levee system at the side of my property. So if the canal ever the water ever came up that it wouldn't flood the blasting bunker right so, right so, so they were they were thinking about all of these things but it, it's kind of interesting that that we have all of this iron and all of this so this whole property is just a big giant you know um let alone the natural iron pyrite but also the uh the iron spikes that were driven in probably in about 1820 or so so they're they're still out there too but I, I just find it interesting that, um, you know, this iron has a, a sort of um, magical property to it in terms of keeping the negative things out. But yet somehow these religious folks were okay with that magic. <laughs> yeah. Right? So, you know, you sort of think about those things. It's it's kind of funny that... Um, one well, back magic. then they sure did have some strange um, beliefs. <laughs> you know, not to very... not to knock anybody's religious systems, but the the beliefs were just so uh, strange. Is not the right word. It's different. Different. They had such yeah. different beliefs. Yeah. They did, and you know, I know that um, you know so many things tie in with these because if they, if they couldn't get their hands on on the iron, the cold iron. I mean, this is why um, glass witch balls were created, right? So you had like a witch ball, and we see them today often. People like to put them out in their garden because they look real pretty, these reflective giant glass balls. They don't really understand their purpose, but in medieval times, um, those were hung in windows and to to keep (laughs) witches from, from entering. And or, you know, and my neighbor put a big one out in their property. So I'm not sure what they're saying here. It's reflecting over to me here. And I happen to notice it. Right. (laughs) I was like, oh, hmm." because I think my neighbor on the other side of the road is a little bit afraid of us. And not because we do anything crazy here, because we don't. But, you know, everyone. 
in a while, I don't think they're quite sure what to make of us. You know, when we leave the house dressed as pirates or we leave the house dressed as, you know, Victorian people or we leave the house yeah. dressed as, yeah. you know, and, <laughs> and we have, um, you know, on the outside of the house on my, my side porch for the longest time, I had um, skull, skulls set up all the way along the ridge of my porch and, and things. And they were probably like, ah, and not to say anything, but the, the lady over there, she's from the islands. And so they're highly superstitious. Right. Right. So she's probably thinking, I don't know who's over there, but maybe this will keep me, <laughs> keep me <laughs> safe. You know, I'm not going on her property for any reason anyways, but I just, I find it funny because there's so many of these, things that carry over today and people see them and they think, Oh, these are really cool. And they look so pretty, but they don't understand the meaning behind them for the most part. Right. And I mean, that, that goes, you know, iron is, is definitely one of them, which balls, which bottles in Elizabethan England were super popular. um, And these were little charms that, Essentially, if you could somehow go and steal a witch's urine, because, you know, that was always doable uh, in, in the medieval time because people would put their buckets outside of their houses. So right. and then those buckets were collected and that urine was used to create lye for dyeing fabrics and wool. So people used to do that. They used to put their buckets out. So I suppose back then it was easy to go and steal a little bit of urine from somebody's bucket if you thought they were a witch. And then you could you sure. know, create a, a little witch bottle, which was um, usually uh, put together in order to cancel out any, you know, sort of spells or things that they may have placed on you and the bottles were often thrown into the fire and then they would explode and the spell would be broken or the witch would die or there's all of these things right um and sometimes they even put bottles right into the chimneys to stop witches from flying down their chimneys oh so yeah so there was a number of things okay now i've got a question sure yeah, um, when I think of witches, just mm-hmm. you know, say the name witch, the first thing that comes to my mind is Salem. Okay, right. And I know, I know you've been there. And oh, yes. How much? I've I've never been there. That's on my oh, list of okay. places to go to one of these days. Right. How much of what we've been talking about exists there? Because to me, Salem is like the cap is like witch capital. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, and like, and here they, we'll, we'll yeah, talk about that, right? Yeah, they got the witch right? gates and and the iron mm-hmm. and and all that stuff there. Yes, well, and and they do. There's there's a lot of there's a lot of iron in Salem, but you know the interesting thing about Salem is, and my um, I happen to have a relative, <laughs> of course I do, who was one of the very first people accused of witchcraft in Salem, um, Sarah Good. She oh, was really? related. Yeah, on my grandmother, my my maternal grandmother's side, um, they and I had no idea. I actually only found this out about four or five months ago. I was like, seriously, okay. Um, so related to my my maternal grandmother, um, she came over in, gosh, I don't know, sixteen oh two or some such thing from from the UK, and. She ended up anyways being one of the original accused. Now, the difference between Salem is um, what people don't know is there's Salem Village and Salem Town. At least there was in those days. So Salem Village and Salem Town, close enough together, but they're quite different in their their thinking um, in terms of, of their early religious thinkings one was far more extreme than the other Um, so what we see today is um, in Salem is mostly and I'm going to say this it's mostly thanks to Lori Cabot and Lori Cabot is um, she's a really lovely woman I've, I've met her many times and the first time I met her I was maybe 13 or 14 and my mom had a friend who lived in Peabody, and so we used to spend a lot of time down there and summers down there. And so when I met Lori, um, I wasn't 
you know, I was just a kid. I wasn't really into witchcraft or any of those kinds of things, but um, I was certainly intrigued. But she really has made Salem what it is today. 